Okay, I want to talk about the three primary topics from this week for just a few minutes. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, I was a radiology operations manager, sitting at my desk, busy doing something close to nothing. When my boss walked in, and I will never forget what he said to me. He said, drop everything you're working on, we're getting a PAC system, and I need you to start working on an implementation plan. And I said, what the heck is a PAC system? In that moment, I became an accidental project manager. I'm pretty sure I got picked to lead the project for three reasons. Well, I did the least amount of work of all the managers, so I could be spared to work on a project. I had the most IT experience, and I had the best understanding of the department workflow. And that's how I got introduced into the world of project management, and it's probably how each of you will become project managers. I didn't have any formal training in project management. I had no desire to be a project manager. I just got thrown into the role. And that's what an accidental project manager is. I want to talk about where ideas come from. So, see these people in the suits? Those people? They will have ideas. And they are radiology directors and CEOs and CIOs. And they will believe that their ideas are brilliant and they will want to turn them into projects. You see these people over here? They're doctors, and they will have ideas. And physicians will talk to the suits and persuade them to turn their ideas into projects. It doesn't matter whether those are actually good ideas or bad ideas or crazy ideas. Some ideas will be brilliant and worthy of your best efforts, and others, well, you'll find out. Either way, you will end up working on projects that come from executives and doctors, and eventually you may end up leading a project that comes from one of them. The other place the projects spawn from are regulatory agencies. When they alter, change, amend, or update regulations, it may precipitate a project in your organization. In other words, when Medicare announced last year that they were reducing the reimbursement for radiology exams done on CR units by 15%, it became necessary for a lot of places to do a retrofit project converting CR units to DR units. And that's a real-world example of how regulatory changes turn into projects in your organization. A lot of people want to say that the project charter is basically the same thing as a project plan. I think people that say that skipped English class in high school. There's a big difference between the words plan and charter. When Christopher Columbus, who's an Italian by the way, sailed from Spain on a project to find India by sailing in the wrong direction, he had a charter from Queen Isabella of Spain. The charter stated he was acting on her behalf and under the protection of the Spanish Navy. So if he were stopped by ships of other countries, France, England, on his voyage, he could simply show them the charter as his legal reason for what he was doing and where he was going. Now your project may not be on the historic scale of Christopher Columbus, but the concept of the charter remains pretty much the same. The project charter is a document that is signed by the project sponsor, who is probably one of those guys or gals in the suits from slide 3. It gives the project manager the authority to act on behalf of the project. It also contains verbiage about the commitment of resources to the project. So while the project charter will have language about project goals and risks and the project scope, the key elements that set it apart from a project plan are it's signed by the executive sponsoring the project, giving the project a level of authority. And it will have a statement about the resources being committed to the project by the organization. So, wow, that's turned into almost four and a half minutes. Thank you for watching.